Hello everyone, welcome to my first YouTube video. Uh, today we'll be looking at how systems like Amazon recommend similar products so quickly. Uh, we'll take a deep dive into how some of the algorithms behind this work like HNSW and IVF and also understand the theory behind it. Uh, so let's jump in. Okay, let's say you're browsing on Amazon uh, for looking for some products, finding the best deals and uh, say you go searching for some tablets i don't know why i'm looking at tablets but uh yeah say if, say you are looking for some tablets uh you go down and uh, you find this section compare with similar items now have you wondered how amazon searches these similar items out of the millions of products that amazon has and gives you the top uh four five items in a matter of just milliseconds now one more interesting thing to notice is that it, it doesn't give you just the same brands right it's not even that all of these recommendations are of the same brand they are all different brands but they are in some way similar to each other they are not very different from each other and they are not exactly the same but they are very similar with each other okay so before we start looking at the process of how Amazon finds similar products, we have to understand something very basic called as embeddings and what is the intuition behind embeddings. Okay, so imagine uh, you're shopping on Amazon and you're checking out this pair of Air Jordans and behind the scenes, all the details about the product. So like it's a uh, title, uh, the product details, the reviews, uh, the price, and about this item are all fed into the machine learning model which is called something called as embedding generator now we, we don't want to get in a lot of detail of how the embedding generator works but uh, just consider it as a black box that if you take all these details like uh, the title the price the reviews and everything it gives you back something called as embedding now this embedding is basically a set of numbers that represent the product in a way machines can understand so it's just like giving the shoe its own digital identity right now what we can do is take this embedding and plot it on something called as embedding space for now just picture this shoes embedding as a red point on this space and as we move along in future examples you'll get a more better idea of this whole uh, concept of embedding space and how it works okay now let's take a look at another example and add another product to the embedding space so these men's boots just like the shoes we saw earlier and all the details of the boots like the name the price and everything are again given into the model which creates an embedding for the item and when we plot this in the space uh, you'll notice that the boots appear kind of closer to the shoes we added earlier and why is that because they share certain similarities right because they both are footwear even though they have they are completely different words have different letters but uh, the semantic meaning uh, behind both of these words are very similar and that is what the embedding captures and using this embedding space you can actually visualize this of how uh, semantically similar words are actually closer to each other in the embedding space so that is the whole point of embedding space okay so now let's throw a completely different uh, example say a leather watch and like before all the details are fed into the model it creates an embedding but uh, if you look at the embedding space now uh, you'll see how watch is plotted far away from shoes and boots and that makes sense right because a watch is totally different from footwear so th th there's almost no overlap in their features so in this space the distance between items is like a measure of how similar or in this case how different they are okay so now that we have a better intuition of how embeddings work let's come back to the problem 
and the problem was how can we identify similar products uh, to a given item so we have say men's boot right and we want to find 10 similar items or five similar items to men's boots and the problem is that how can we search this entire data as efficiently as possible to get these five similar items now one solution would be to search all the items okay so the simplest way to find similar items is something called uh, flat indexing say we say we want to find products similar to these men's boot right the idea is to take the query these boots and compare their embedding with every single other embedding in the data set to find the closest one uh, this method is called k nearest neighbors i mean it's accurate because it literally checks every possible pair of pair for similarity but uh, here's the problem uh, imagine doing this for millions and billions of uh, items that would take forever and uh, you want a very time efficient way to search all these millions and billions of items while also making sure that uh, the accuracy is reasonable enough so the question is is there a better way to do this can we get those five similar items without checking every single product in the database and uh, this better way is called ann or approximate nearest neighbor now instead of brute forcing through every item uh, ann uses smart algorithms to quickly find uh, the closest matches with uh, almost the same accuracy uh, it's fast efficient and uh, perfect for large data sets uh, so let's have a look at two algorithms ivf and hnsw and see how they work all right uh, let's start with the first method ivf or inverted file indexing okay so what ivf does is pretty straightforward it just uh, divides this entire space so this entire space that we had it just divides that into clusters and uh, each of this cluster has a centroid so if you can see this blue green yellow and red points they are all centroids of these clusters okay so the first step is to identify the closest cluster and the way we do that is we calculate the distance between all the centroids right so we calculate the distance between the red the blue green yellow and uh, as you can see the yellow is the closest uh, centroid to the query vector so we only choose the yellow's uh, cluster now this limits our search space significantly because what we do now is we consider only the points which are there in the yellow cluster and we don't focus uh, on the red the blue and the green cluster so we avoid all these points and we just search this particular cluster and return the top similar items which has the closest distance to the query vector now if you can see that uh, this distance and this distance if you compare d2 is obviously less than d1 but we are not considering d2 and this is the whole concept of ann that is why it is approximate nearest neighbor rather than an exhaustive nearest neighbor so we don't consider all the points and uh, th that is the exact trade off even though we are losing some accuracy but the amount of time that we are saving in not searching all these clusters is significant the second algorithm in approximate nearest neighbor which is hierarchical navigable small world and before talking about hnsw and before coming to hnsw i wanted to introduce something called as skip lists which is kind of an inspiration for hnsw so skip lists is uh, can be viewed as just a bunch of linked lists which are organized in layers and uh, the concept is as you start from the very first layer that is the topmost layer and as you move down the layers get more dense so as you can see the first layer is very sparse there is just two connections in the second layer there are like four connections and as you move down so this the last layer has all the connections now say for instance you are searching for three you start over here you move to one 
and now in, in the middle there are no elements so you move to nil then you again come to the second layer you go to one and now since three is less than four it won't go to four but it'll go to the next layer then it'll come to one and then it'll go to three so now we have found three all right let's talk about navigable small world uh, this is like a building block for hnsw so this method creates a graph like structure where the nodes are connected uh, based on proximity so the goal is to navigate uh, through the graph to find the closest neighbor to the query point so this is our query point and uh, we want to find the nearest neighbor to that okay the f so the first step is just to choose a random entry point and start from there so once we have the entry point what we do is we select all the neighbors for that entry point so one and six are the neighbors now out of these neighbors we check which ones are closest to the query point now six out of one and six six is closest to the query point so we make six as our current node and get all the neighbors to six which is eight three five now you can see that five is closest to the query point so we make five as our current node and now six and four are the neighbors so now you can see from the graph that this neighbor and this neighbor and this out of these three five is closest to the query point so that is exactly our stopping condition so this is the stopping condition in nsw we halt when there's no neighbor closer than our current node and uh, that is how we navigate through this uh, graph to find the closest neighbor now there is one limitation to this so as you can see from the graph that uh, if we start our entry point from say 7 and uh, now you compare the neighbors and the current node to the query point so obviously you can see that 7 is closer to the query point than its neighbors 1 and 8 and this is called as early stopping even though we have better candidates better nodes which are closer to the query we stop over here now that we know how uh, the navigation in nsw works we can have a look at hnsw so the search starts at again a random entry point in this case the red one uh, we look at both the neighbors and we choose the one which is closest to the query so now we choose this one and now this point that we have chosen the blue point becomes the entry point in the next layer so now this is the entry point and then we do the same thing we look at the neighbors and choose the one which is closest to the query so in layer one also we do the same thing now this node becomes the entry point in layer zero so this becomes now the entry point and we do the same thing we look at the nearest neighbor which is closest to the query point and this is how we get the nearest neighbor to the query so it's it's kind of an iterative process wherein at each layer we are coming closer to the query point so that we have seen how uh, hnsw searching works we can have a look at how to construct an hnsw graph so say for instance we have uh, a point that we want to insert in the hnsw graph right so the way the first step is to decide on which layer uh, that particular node is going to be inserted right that's the first step and uh, the way we identify on which layer the node has to be inserted is through prob probability distribution so layer zero is going to have the highest probability of that node to be included and once we move to layer one it's going to have a lesser probability that it's going to be included on layer one and so on and so forth so the probability kind of decreases as we go up and that is the reason there are very few points on the topmost layer so we'll have a look at how once we have this node and we have identified on which layer we want to insert this node on we'll see how to construct the hnsw graph okay so for say for instance we want to insert the node at layer two 
and currently we are at la layer 4 right so the point has not been inserted yet but still we do the normal SA nsw search so that becomes our entry point to layer 3 we again come to the uh, nearest node and at layer 2 we want to insert the node right so that is where we make the connections and the connections are decided by the value m so since m is equal to 2 we make two edges in layer 2 now in layer 1 we do the same thing we bring this as the entry point in layer 1 we make two connections over here one to this one to this and now since m max equal to 3 that means maximum number of edges that a node can have in a layer are three so you can see that this this is normal one two three one two three however this node has four edges so one two three four that is why what we do is we take out this particular connection okay so we take this out and now if you see all the nodes have up to maximum three edges now we come to the last layer which is the zeroth layer and uh, again we do the same thing and this comes as the entry point to the last layer uh, we make the connections to the nearest neighbor and over here what you can see is that m max 0 is equal to 4 now the difference between m max and m max 0 is m max 0 is referring only to the zeroth layer and m max is returning is referring to all the other layers now over here it says that m max 0 can have maximum four edges so that is why over here if any of the node has four edges it's it's good we don't have to do anything we don't have to remove any edges so this you can see that this has four edges and this also has four edges so we don't do anything we keep it as is and this is how we construct a hnsw graph so besides ivf and hnsw there are a lot of different algorithms that uh, you guys can search for uh, this chart just gives us a glimpse into how these algorithms form uh, balancing speed and accuracy so as you look at this chart uh, recall is on the x-axis and queries per second is on the y-axis that is the number of queries that the algorithm can generate in one second and uh, the ideal algorithm would be up and to the right meaning it's both accurate and fast and uh, just to give you a breakdown of what recall means is uh, imagine you are searching for top 10 closest neighbors for a query point and if the algorithm finds eight out of the actual true neighbors out of 10 uh, the recall would be 0.8 which is 80 percent uh, and essentially it's the number of true neighbors retrieved divided by the total number of true neighbors uh, that are available all right guys that's it for today i hope this gave you a better understanding of how these algorithms work uh, if you found this video helpful feel free to like share or drop a comment and please don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one